Today, in celebration of reaching 5,000 subscribers, we are giving away a five ounce silver bar here on Silver Forever. But I kind of messed up because it's been less than 10 days and we've already added another 1,000 subscribers to the Accumulation Nation. So thank you to all of you and let's talk about what silver you should avoid, especially as a beginner in silver stacking. But keep in mind, we could all use a healthy reminder of the silver stacking fundamentals. So if you're a seasoned stacker, let us know about your experiences and share your stories in the comments. Now let's just jump into it. The first type of silver that you should definitely avoid as a beginner stacker is slabbed bullion, specifically modern slabbed bullion coins. And here's why. There's a fundamental difference between stacking silver for weight and collecting numismatic silver coins. At the most basic level, the value of your generic silver bullion is purely based on the silver inside. On the other hand, numismatic coins might happen to be made out of silver or even gold, but the value of a numismatic coin is derived from its history, its mintage, and most importantly, its condition. And that's why grading is so important for numismatic coins. Now keep in mind, a lot of these professional graders, places like PCGS and NGC, they are not solely interested in grading silver and gold bullion. No, they are grading coins, whether or not they contain these precious metals like gold and silver. Grading is so important because you want to be able to rely on an expert to tell you about the condition or grade of the coin. If a coin is able to reach a certain grade, then its value can increase exponentially depending on the coin. So that is why grading is so important in the coin world, in the numismatic community. But if you are simply stacking silver and you have the option of stacking silver bars or generic rounds or silver bullion coins minted by a sovereign government, the reason why you would stack something like an American Silver Eagle is not because of its condition, but because the government that has backed it is preventing counterfeiting of that coin. The reason why you would want an American Silver Eagle if you live in the US is because people are gonna trust it when you go to sell. It is a secure form of silver in a one ounce denomination. So that is the value of having silver coinage in modern bullion. Now, why people choose to pay to have modern silver bullion graded, I do not know. Why there are people out there who buy this stuff, I do not know. I think it's a bad decision, especially as a beginner, if you don't know what you're doing. Because when you go to sell that, you are never going to be paid for it on the basis of its rarity. I mean, look at a low year for these silver bullion coins. There is nothing rare or scarce about them. That is the main issue is when you go to sell this stuff, you're not gonna get your money back, the money that you pay for it. So many of these people who are selling modern slab bullion coins are doing so to beginners and people who don't know any better and are kind of getting taken advantage of in that situation. And that is why it was my number one on the list of silver to avoid for beginner stackers. But number two is actually a more interesting conversation and that is semi numismatic coins. We just talked about numismatic coins, but what is a semi numismatic coin? You might've heard Silver Dragon say semi numi or something like that. And still other people think that semi numismatic is not even a good term to be using. But the way that I see semi numismatic coins is premium silver bullion, essentially. So think about examples like the Perth Mint's Kookaburra series, any government minted series of coin that is kind of a premium product. Those are typically going to be your semi numismatic coins. So you are going to be able to sell them often at a price that is higher than a simple generic round or even a typical bullion coin, but only in a private sale. It's not very often that you're gonna go to sell to a local coin shop and that they are going to give you back the premium that you pay for some of these semi numismatic coins. And here's the pitfall, and you know, I'm guilty of this too. We love looking at our silver, playing with our treasure and you wanna see these cool different designs. I know for me having a YouTube channel, I love to show off these different coins to everybody. I mean, just check out this video I did here with 17 different silver bullion coins from all over the globe. But the reality is when you go to sell these, you're not often gonna make 
that premium back. And sure, you might get paid an extra dollar or two for your fancy premium semi-numismatic coin by the local coin shop dealer, but if you pay three, four, five, six more dollars to just to acquire that ounce in the beginning, well, obviously you're not making that premium back. And so maybe you would have been better served to just simply buy generic bullion in that circumstance. I'm sure you're noticing a trend here. The general idea is you need to be sure that you are going to get that money back on the sale. If you are going to put money into whatever type of silver that you're gonna buy as a beginner, you have to think about the exit strategy and the sale. If you don't think you're gonna be able to make that premium back, well, maybe it's not a good decision in the first place. If you spend enough time around the stacking community, you often see this trend, and that is that in the beginning, people are much more interested in getting their hands on some cool, unique stuff, semi-numismatic coins, but by the end game, a lot of people are just thinking about stacking generic at the lowest premiums possible or a sure thing like the American Gold Eagle. And so maybe you should learn from some of these more veteran seasoned stackers like I have. So not getting your money back is obviously a problem, but what if you can't get your money at all? And that's where we're going with number three, rare specialties. These are niche items, and I will show you one right here. This is a complete set of Platinum Noble coins, and these are very valuable coins. I got a great deal on them, but the big problem with stuff like this is you have to find the right buyer. Similarly with semi-numismatic coins. If you're not going to an LCS, if you're trying to do a private sale, selling generic silver is very different than selling some specialty niche item there aren't a lot of collectors out there who are interested so your sales pool is obviously going to be less and that's why number three is really important to consider you might find a great deal like i have at several points at the local coin shop for some of these rare specialty items but the problem is who are you going to sell to and if you can't find the right private buyer who's willing to pay you that high premium for this rare specialty, then you're gonna end up SOL because you won't have a buyer willing to pay anything beyond the value of the precious metals inside. So as a beginner, unless you're really familiar with the markets, unless you really have great connections that will buy and sell precious metals with you, you might wanna reconsider buying one of those fancy specialty niche items. And that brings us to number four. What's the opposite of a fancy specialty niche item? It is a large bar. Think about this, a 100 ounce bar. Now, if you're a beginner, that doesn't say anything about your budget, right? You could be somebody who's just crunching cans and stacking one ounce coins like Silver Dragons did in the beginning, or you could be a well-established, mature family man who's got a million dollars in the bank and is looking to diversify into precious metals. So being a beginner says nothing about your budget. Now for those wealthy high rollers among us, it might be really interesting for you to buy 100 ounce bars, especially if you're looking at the premium percentage and you're comparing different forms of silver that you can buy. 100 ounce bars are often pretty cheap. I mean, I know that's the reason why I'm such a huge advocate for kilo bars, but when you start getting into the 100 ounce bar range, or if you wanna go all out like some of these silverbacks on Reddit, and buy 1,000 ounce Comex bars, think about the problems that are built into that. First of all, not many people can afford to just outright buy a 100 ounce silver bar off of you, and many of those people who could, they're just using gold as that precious metals investment. There's also just the problem of lacking fractionality with those large bars. If you wanna make a sale, it's not realistic for you to be shaving off parts of your silver bar. No, you're gonna to have to sell it all at once. So there's no running down to the LCS and getting a couple hundred bucks in your time of need if all you have is 100 ounce bars. And then there's just the reality, if you have a thousand ounce bar and that's like 70 something pounds, good luck carrying that thing around. So large bars are very tempting and there are unique circumstances where this might make sense for people i mean every one of these types of silver i'm suggesting you should avoid as a beginner might be the right decision depending on someone's unique circumstances but here as a beginner especially if you're getting started i would not advise going as high as 100 ounce bars 
the stacking community in general has kind of come to an agreement that 10 ounce bars seems to be the perfect balance there. Right now they're about 250 bucks, just ballpark. And that's kind of a healthy middle ground there where you're not running around with one ounce rounds and coins out the wazoo, but you're also not dealing with these massive silver bars. And now to our last one, number five, world junk. Now, you know, beginner, you might not even know what I mean by this. What I mean is junk silver. So anything that's not pure bullion, 999 fine silver. This was often used as coinage all around the world, including in the United States. You know, we have 90% dimes, quarters, half dollars up until 1964. And likewise, countries all over the world had silver coinage of various purities at various times. And you can even find certain ones like this one right here I'm gonna show you is 10% silver. So there's a wide variety of different purities. There's a wide variety of sizes, countries of origins, face value denominations, and all of these differences lead to one major problem. How do you value these coins, especially when they're not being valued for their numismatic potential, but because they're being valued for their actual silver weight or the silver that's inside. It's really difficult when you just have a wide array of various silver coins from various different countries. Just looking these things up and finding information about them is a real problem when you're not an expert. And imagine you take a bin of this world junk silver into a local coin shop they're not going to go through every single coin. They're going to offer you some flat rate that's going to be significantly lower than spot price for the actual silver weight equivalent, most likely. And uh, they're going to have a hard time selling it. So the reason why you can find world junk silver at fairly low prices is because there aren't a lot of buyers for it. I happen to think world junk silver is really cool for the same reason I think 90% American constitutional silver is really cool. I just enjoy playing around with it. But the reality is world junk is not a great investment in the same way that, you know, 35% silver war nickels in America are not a great investment. It's because they're low purity and there's not tons of people out there who are refining them or who need them in large amounts. And so there's just not a high premium for them. So when you're searching around for the absolute lowest price silver bullion, just know that things like large bars, things like world junk silver are priced low for a reason. They do have the lowest premium for a reason, and that is why you should avoid them as well. Now let's talk about what silver not to avoid. If you've been a dedicated viewer of Silver Forever, then you know about my love affair with Germania Mint Bars. Accumulation Nation, once again, I've joined forces with Pimbex, giving away some sweet Germania Mint Silver, but this time, we're not just giving away a 100 gram silver bar. No, we are going to give away a five troy ounce Germania Mint cast silver bar. So here's what you have to do to make sure that you have your chance to win. Hit that like button, and comment down below using the word accumulate. Now make sure you spell it correctly because that's how the random comment picker works. So pause the video if you have to, but make sure you use the word accumulate in your comment and spell it correctly and live in America for your very own chance to win this incredible five ounce Germania Mint silver bar. Now, thanks once again to Pimbex for enabling us to do bigger and bigger silver giveaways here at Silver Forever. And make sure to check out this video. And until next time, Silver Forever, out.